This is Just Tool Basics, and today we're talking about grounding probes. Hello everyone, welcome to Just Tool Basics. Today's topic is grounding probes, which is a little bit of a deviation from our typical, like, normal tools. What this is for is this one is actually for aquariums so that you can ensure that you're not accidentally introducing uh, any current into your aquarium, which, you know, would be upsetting if I was a fish. I wouldn't want to be getting electric shocks while I'm swimming around in my house. But what we're going to talk about is using this as a tool for when you're dealing with very sensitive electronic components. Now, you've probably seen a wrist strap like this. You know, it straps on this just snaps on and uh, when you have it strapped on to your wrist it uh, it presses against your skin which means that you can be grounded uh, if you were to touch something so if you're in an environment that has a lot of static electricity or even a little static electricity uh, instead of arcing from your hand into the sensitive thing that you're going to be working on instead it pre grounds you by you know since it's touching your skin, it runs it down this wire and grounds it into whatever this is clipped to. Now, if you've watched anything like computer builds or dealing with electronics, you've probably seen folks use this, especially with computer builds, and they'll just clip this to the computer case, and then the computer case will be sitting just on a table or something like that, and they'll be like, make sure you're grounded. First, it's questionable at all if you need to be grounded when dealing with computer components because... They're just designed to be handled. Like they're generally coated with um, an anti-static film to prevent static discharge from damaging the components. However, it doesn't hurt. I still will do it when I'm dealing with processors while I'm installing them into the motherboard, things like that. But when it's more important is when you're dealing with unprotected electronics that are not designed to be handled. So just really sensitive electronics if you're doing your own electronics repair or building electronics, messing with things like that where they're absolutely not designed to be handled. They're designed to be put together in a machine or put together in a clean room where static is very much a consideration that you want to deal with. Now, my point in all of this is you can get uh, an interface that instead of this clip, you know, these things are just banana plugs, and they'll plug into uh, like a mat. This is a cutting mat, but there's an ESD, uh, electrostatic discharge mat, that's designed to absorb static electricity and dissipate it. But still, if that's not actually grounded, meaning to the ground, you're still taking the risk that you're going to introduce a shock into the, uh, into the components you're trying to protect. So that is where this device comes in. You can tell, and I, bu I have another one of these, but I bought this one so that I could have a brand because I don't remember where I got mine from and I was having trouble tracking it down. So I bought this one specifically to show you guys. Now, like I said, this is designed for an aquarium. This little suction cup is designed to be put in the aquarium and hold this up. So as you can see, it's a normal plug except that these are plastic and obviously not conductive. Plastic is not conductive. The ground lug though is just metal and it's normal and this wire is uh and this probe so this this is uh titanium and the reason it's titanium is because they don't want it corroding in your fish tank if you're well that's all knotted up but you get the idea so this is inserted into your aquarium and then the titanium won't corrode to you know gross up your aquarium. But the important thing is this and this are connected. So if you connect to this, now you're really grounded. You're grounded to the ground. So when you go to interact with your electronics or your PC computer or whatever, and you touch the frame of the PC then, barehanded, now with gloves on, uh, you will ground out and, uh, and ensure that that static discharge goes all the way to the earth, which is what grounding means. What I normally do, what I've done to my other one, is actually cut this thing off because I don't care about <laughs> the interaction with my fish tank water. And I put another alligator clip on the end of here so that I can clip these things to the same case, 
uh, if I'm dealing with a computer case, or clip them to the electrostatic discharge mat if I have like a electrostatic distribution block. I'll link to what I'm talking about with that thing. I have it screwed to a table, so I didn't want to unscrew it just to show you guys, but it, it basically is an interface so you can clip multiple wrist straps to it. It's designed for like a lab interface. Uh, I'm sure you noticed also that it has this ring here. This is for screwing onto that center screw of the outlet. Um, just in case, for whatever reason, the ground of the outlet isn't properly done, this is uh, a way to get a ground to the receptacle housing. Uh, if you know for a fact that your outlet is grounded properly, then you don't have to you don't have to mess with this this screw thing. And on that topic, in my house, I know that my outlets are all done properly because I check them because I want to make sure that I'm not you know swapping hot and neutral or worse swapping ground in one of the other wires, which I have not encountered in real life before, but if you have a, a nice circuit checker, it will tell you if that's the case. I would not go plugging this into a random outlet in a place I didn't know without checking it first because it would be terrible if your hot and ground were swapped and suddenly you're delivering um, 120 volts to yourself. But assuming it's in your house, assuming it's a circuit that you know, this is the safest way to ground something properly, truly to ground. And lastly, of course, if it was untangled, despite, despite the packaging saying that it has a 10 inch wire lead, this is a 10 foot wire lead, of course, uh, it, it's just copper wire. So if you want to plug this in even farther away than 10 feet, you can absolutely uh, extend this wire if you, if you wanted to. Like instead of just cutting off the end and putting on an alligator clip, you could instead put another wire on it and make it as long as you like. I mean, you don't have to worry too much about voltage drop for a ground circuit. That's basically it. Until next time, this is Just Tool Basics.